Difficult, my dear friends. Uh, it's very difficult for me to officially introduce Arvind because he's one of my closest friends, and uh, we have been working together for the last uh, 50 years now. I still have uh, the first postcards. See, those, those were the times, not of WhatsApp message or YouTube. We were communicating uh, through uh, postcards, and Arvind was very famous for his uh, postcards. He used to write hundreds of uh, postcards and i used to write also uh, as secretary of kssp postcards was my main uh, communication medium so we learned from each other postcarding <laughs> anyway uh, yeah, i will very briefly introduce arvind because uh, arvind is not just an individual he is a very creative enterprise uh, i must say he has been uh, working in this field, uh, so far as I know, for the last 50, 60 years, he started his work uh, if in 1975 uh, when he was studying in Kanpur, IIT. Uh, he started his work with uh, the poor children in and, in and around uh, Kanpur, helping them to learn science and uh, the life around. And he created uh, his own um, uh uh niche in niche in that area and uh, by that time he had become famous as a student and later uh, he became uh, one of the best known students of uh, kanpur iit uh, he has been basically trying to kind of communicate with children and teachers uh, arvind has conducted thousands of thousands of workshops all over india and outside and he has been I don't know, um, some people call him a toy maker, some call him uh, a publisher, writer. He's all this uh, put together. He doesn't leave uh, any opportunity to take uh, good messages, not only science. Uh, it's science sometimes, it's education. We have benefited quite a lot of some of the best books that KSSP has brought out, whether it is Divasopna by Gijubai, or whether it is uh, Toto Chan, all these books you won't uh, believe were introduced basically uh, to some of us uh, by Aravind. And uh, if you have to kind of, uh, uh, it will need for me uh, uh, at least one hour to introduce all that. I will not uh, do that. Just go to his um, website, aravindguptatoys.com. Uh, you can just see the effort that he has made in the field of both toy making and his toy making is not just uh, toy making it is as many of you must be knowing it is toys from the trash simple uh, toys that normally are made out of things that you throw away whether it is a syringe or whether it is a uh, milma bottle or whatever whatever he he comes out with uh, um, electric motors or what you call his matchstick meccano is uh, world famous it has been published uh, in all the languages. So basically, and he has been awarded, uh, he has received many awards. One of the latest was uh, that Patma Bhushan, uh, Patma, Patma Sri Award by the government of India. He has Narendra the Bolkar Award as when, was when he was uh, awarded the mathematics, best mathematics teacher award. He was given NCST's award. There are, I was just looking at the award list. That by itself is a long essay. So I will not go into that detail. But for me, more than all this, Arvind is one of the most sincere science teachers, most dedicated. I have every time when I get I guess, uh, get his email at least once in a month and it will be containing at least 20 to 30 new books. And I suddenly from my laziness or whatever, I come out of that and I start writing something on my own as soon as I see that. Because the kind of inspiration that Arvind has been giving. And I don't know how many thousands of books are there in Hindi, in Marathi, in English, and also some in Malayalam also. 
uh, he, many of his books uh, have been translated into many languages and he has not been doing it alone he inspires people around and many people have come uh, together with him and they all have been contributing so basically uh, the rest of it uh, let arvind talk to you directly uh, arvind is, has been a friend of kssp for the last at least 50 50 years he has translated for us he has made us translate ende endu konde nalla paata aadyamayitte malayalathilekke translate cheyida arvind gupta ana many of our songs have been translated by him many many books uh, uh, we have published all have come uh, through his inspiration so i thank arvind at this point and uh, uh, with great pleasure my friend i introduce you to this new venture by kssp we have been a bit slow on slow media arvind's uh, one interesting thing is that uh, arvind has been picking up communication in initially as i said he started with postcard but he is one of the best social media communicators living in india at present he has uh, millions and millions of uh, uh, viewers so uh, all of us were uh, keeping kind of mum about the social media but he jumped into it and he started typing uh, <laughs> into initially into facebook then uh, all kinds of you know he he is most modern in that area also he's an excellent typer a typist <laughs> he types himself into there are so many things uh, I won't take more of uh, your time. So, with great pleasure, uh, I introduce Arvind, my friend, our friend, and a great inspiration for all of us. He's a science educator, he's a science communicator, and more than, more than all that, somebody who has been constantly communicating with common children, common people, and a dedicated, I must say, humanist socialist. That's uh, what Arvind is. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, KK, uh, for your very, very kind words. Uh, well, I must tell you about my journey to... Uh, uh, when I was studying in IIT Kanpur, I used to read a lot about Laurie Baker. He was my college day icon, my ideal, so to say. I did electrical engineering. I had nothing to do with... Laurie that. Baker, I hope you heard. Uh, uh, Laurie Baker is what yes. he said. Now. Yes. So in 1978, uh, I took a year off to work with the Hushangabad science teaching program, which was a great inspiration in my life. And then or then I took a train to Trivandrum and I spent four months in 1978 with Laurie Baker. And that's the time when I met, uh, I had gone to the State Institute of Languages and that's where I met uh, Krishna Kumar in 1978. And he asked me, what do you do? And by that time, I had done this in my first month in uh, Kishor Bharti, Hushangabad Science. This is the matchstick model. This is my first book, uh, which came into 12 languages. Six years back, it was translated into Chinese. So I showed him this. And uh, well, Laurie Baker and the KSSP has been a source of great inspiration in my life. I think Laurie Baker was, the, was one architect. Uh, who touched the lives of the poor. Uh, how many architects would design a fishing village or houses for poor people? And that's what Laurie Baker did. Uh, his deep inspiration comes from using local materials, local designs, local craftsperson. And I was very, very sensitized by that. As a matter of fact, over the years, I have translated many, many books by Laurie Baker into Hindi. Many of them I've made bilingual, kept his English and added my Hindi translation to it. Just in March, three months back, I was in the Azim Premji University, where a friend gifted me six new books by Laurie Baker, brought out by Cosford. When he knew that I'd worked with him, I came back and promptly all six are now bilingual in English and in Hindi uh, for the benefit of many, many people. So that's it. And well, I've been, one is that 40 years back, when I started looking at education, you could find made easies, you could find guides, uh, you could find some of the classics by Montessori, etc. But very few good experiences on education. And that became a, a very, uh, that became a focal point for me. So over the years, like 40 years, some 70, 80, 
of the greatest books on education in the world whether it be it's Summerhill, whether it be Diva Swapna, Toto Chan, How Children Fail, How to Learn, Teacher by Sylvia Ashton Warner, uh, the Sudbury Valley School, many, many such books. We try to get them translated into Hindi, Marathi, and many, many languages. I just received a, a letter from a teacher. Uh, he's the editor of a, of a teacher's magazine in Nepal. Uh, a very, very, uh, a very, very respected uh, editor. And he said that, uh, sir, 15 years back, you had sent me a copy of Divaswap, which I translated into Nepali. And would you believe that 45,000 copies of uh, Divaswap have been sold in Nepali? And uh, it's become a must read for every teacher. So the inspiration was that the educational terrain in our country is very, very barren. It's a very rocky terrain. Uh, it's stony. There is no soil. Even if there was a good seed, that seed would wilt away because there's no nurturance. And our task is very small, very historic, but it's a small delta task. Every day, uh, bring some, translate some great stuff into the local language. Uh, we, we have got a group of friends and we have translated close to, we have no organization. It's a loose group of friends who have hung around together for years. And we have translated over 2,100 of some of the best children's books into Hindi. Another 800 into Marathi, some 200 into Telugu, another 200 into Tamil and Kannada. That's about it. But every day, Every day, in the last 10 years, every single day, I translate one book a day, a children's book. Books are usually, they have lots of pictures, maybe a quarter page is text, or 40% is text, 60% are pictures. So a 40 page book is my target. Well, in one day, you can download the book and you can translate it, put the pictures and the text together, make a PDF and upload it. So this is it. We don't have to pursue publishers. We don't have to look at the sales register. These books are the people across the Hindi heartland. And the Hindi heartland, if you look at the Bimaru states, the states where the human development index is the lowest, it's states like UP, large states, the 12 crore, 14 crore population, the states like Bihar, states like Madhya Pradesh, which are very, very backward. So they need these books the most. Uh, so that's what we try to keep doing. Our task is every day make a fistful of soil. It's a very barren terrain. Unless there is soil, no flowers will blossom. There will never be a spring harvest. So this is our task. Whether it's, uh, whether it's making short videos, I was privileged to work at the Ayuka Children's Science Center. This was set by Professor Jayan Narlikar, India's most decorated astrophysicist and amazing human being. So he had this dream that we give a PhD in astronomy and astrophysics. We must have a children's science center over here. Catch them young, imbue them with the love of science. And that is how someday we would get better PhD students Good PhD students don't fall from the sky. Someone has to nurture them over the years. Someone has to instill the love of science to them. So Professor Narlikar has written extensively in Marathi, extensively in Marathi. And so I was privileged to work in that small science center. I had two colleagues. It was a very small group, very small group, a very passionate, very focused group every day. I, before that, I had made 150 films with the NCRT, National Council for Education Research and Training. They were television wing called as the CIET, Central Institute for Education Technology. So in the mid-80s, I'd started making films with them. There was only one channel at that time, the Doodarsha, and there was a half an hour slot there called as Tarang. So I made close 150 films for Tarang, and they were beamed over and over again. My friends were very critical of me that, uh, you know, why do you go to a government media, et cetera, et cetera. I didn't bother. I said, look, I still write books. 
and my books are very low cost. My books are freely available. I don't charge royalty for them. But this is a new kind of medium, which will go to many, many more places than books can ever reach. So I, so in the science center, I had some experience of making films. So we, we by the time these small mobile cameras had come in, uh, electronic cameras where you could take small, small clips and videos. So every day we used to make a short film. And the film was, we said it should be a two minute film. Long films are boring. There would be no, no face of mine in any of the films. He said, faces are boring, ideas are fascinating. So it'd be a two minute film, material, first step, second step, third step, and when the toy or the teaching aid is ready, there'd be a new child playing with it every day. They were our heroes and heroines, not us. And we got them dubbed across. Wherever we found partners in house, I would do them into Hindi and English. My colleague, Dr. Vidla Mahiskar, would dub them into Marathi. So all of them went to Marathi, into three languages. But wherever we found partners, uh, you know, Tamil Nadu is a very progressive state like Kerala. And a couple of years back, the director of the SCRT wrote me a letter. Sir, we see these 1100 videos on your website. And uh, uh, we would like to dub them all into Tamil. And he called 15 teachers for three weeks and all 1100 videos they dubbed into Tamil and it's on the SCRT Tamil Nadu channel now for ordinary children. I wish the state of Kerala, which is much more progressive than the KSSP, they dub our videos into Malayalam. These are just two minute videos all the scripts are there in English. It is not a Herculean task. It's a small task. It's a ready-made material, which will help. And we, so we got them into 16 languages. I'll give you just one example. Where I worked in the Pune University at Ayuka, Inter University Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics, there was an adjoining institute called the National Center for Radio Astronomy. They run the giant radio telescope in Pune. And there was a postdoc student, she had come from the Dominic Republic, just next to Haiti, a very poor country in the Caribbean. Her name was Dr. Brizio Kana Flacca. She came to her center for three hours. She was just looking at the toys. And then Brizio said, I come from such a poor country, this is what my children need. And this came deep from within. And Brizio dubbed 350 of her videos into Spanish, which was a mother tongue. Spanish is spoken in 26 countries. Millions of children across these Spanish countries saw our videos. Our videos are all coming from a 400 square room from a government organization. Ayuka was totally funded by the UGC. We have over 100 million viewers videos They're in 16 languages. Uh, uh, there is a school in Pune, it's the Delhi Public School in Pune. But the owner is a very progressive man. He has a school in Jalandhar, Delhi Public School. He owns a franchise. He visited me and he said, sir, how can we help you? I said, sir, no one in, is willing to dub our videos into Punjabi. He said, we will do it. Appointed a teacher and today we have 800 videos into Punjabi. Similarly, wherever help came from, we collaborated with people across the globe to get them dub. We put them in the, into the Creative Commons, no copyrights, anyone can dub them, anyone can use it, for not for profit. That's what we did. I also, I also feel that there is a, trying to get books, trying to get videos, and trying to get exciting things for teachers and for children. Often, I find that uh, I've done about 3,000 workshops in various schools, worked in 25 countries, and often I find that all the schools I've visited, I found the, the bad managements, bad teachers, bad principals, never a bad child. So if you thought we could get things directly on to children, they will latch on. And then, so I've, I think I've spoken a lot. There will be teachers uh, uh, who can ask me questions, and I'd be very, very happy to answer them. It costs five rupees, just five rupees to make it. There is a ferrite magnet. 
these are two safety pins. This black thing is cycle, old cycle tube. And this is one meter of insulated copper wire. It's amazing. You see a gleam in the eyes of the children when they get a motor to work. Over a lakh children made the motor in our center. Please go ahead with the questions. I'd be very happy to answer. Sorry that I am not following up with your uh, new new toys. Right? You have <laughs> made, but, I look but with the advent of uh, modern technology, yes, uh, especially digital technology and others, are you inventing newer methods of uh, toy making? No, no, I'm making use of them. No, our toys are toys from trash. So for for instance, old plastic bottles, the millions are thrown every day. They become a menace. Yeah. We have a hundred toys just using old plastic bottles. There is a lot of creativity. There is a lot of things to do and you can make with them. I'll give you one very small example. Now, this, this is not an original. This was done by the Vikram Sarabhai Community Science Center. Uh, this was set up in 1962 by Vikram Sarabhai and was inaugurated by Sir C. V. Raman with the lecture, Why is the Sky Blue? So they gave Every child, one matchbox, one empty matchbox, same brand, not the home light ones, which are bigger, but just, and all the children were given a challenge. You have one week and you have to pack maximum number of things in this matchbox, one specimen of each. If you put one grain of rice, you can't put two grains of rice. So the children were very happy. No mincing words, it's a very simple, a simple challenge. So they went home and they started searching for small, small things. Someone went to the kitchen, took a jeera, a cumin seed, a mustard seed, a one, one, one lentil, one rice grain, one strand of hair. So for a week, they just looked into the micro world around them. And after a week, all the children came back to the class because there was a prize. The child who packed maximum number of things in the matchbox would get a prize. So the teacher asked everyone to stand up and shake the matchbox. Well, from some matchboxes, you could hear a sound. There was some noise, some, some rumbling inside. And those children were out. Because if there is a sound inside, which means there is some cavity, there is some void, there is some empty space. And, and then the, the rest were asked to open the matchbox. And one, one child was able to pack in 150 things into a matchbox. Yes. This is a very low cost experiment, costs no money. Science is not hardware. With all the hardware, we do bad science. Science is an ability to critically look at phenomenon around you and see new patterns. And this is a very lovely example. Uh, maybe someday you could. We made a small two minute video. How many things in a match? We made a video of this. Connecting, yes. connecting the children with their surroundings. Yes, yes, absolutely. absolutely. Actually, it is a connectivity project. Yes, yes it is. It is. Um, this is another very nice experiment. This is a hundred year old experiment. Here is a pencil with a rubber on one end. Most children have a pencil like this. If they make a mistake, they can erase it. There is an eraser over here. So what we've done is we've just cut a few notches. Can you see these four or five notches with a pen knife or a blade? We make these five, five deep notches. And then you can see that over here, uh, there is a pin. You push the pin. There is a propeller. This is from a cardboard. You make a crisscross to locate the center. Make a big hole so that this fan is a bit loose. And you push a paper pen, and this white rubber is like a stopper. That's it. That's what the toy is. It's a hundred year old toy. And this is a refill. If I just rub, rub, something amazing happens. People, this is a freaked out on this toy. It's very amazing, but very simple. <laughs> yes. Oh, for the, there have been six major research papers in this toy. This is non trivial physics. It's very difficult to explain what is happening. But every child can enjoy it. I think children love this toy. I always tell children, I've been to many, many schools, and schools are boring from the word go, right? And I tell children, how do you survive school? 
you make a toy like this. When the teacher is dictating notes, you should be writing with your pencil. When the teacher turns the other way, every child should be playing with a toy like this. Because that's what God sent children on earth for. God sent them to play and enjoy, not to uh, mug up these stupid things. Very, very nice toy. Uh, another very wonderful toy is uh, this is uh, <clears throat> uh, it's like a levitating pencil. And here's a piece of rubber. I'll just show you what it does. There is a pen over here, and the pen is levitating because of the four magnets below. And if I give it a twirl, you can see. It levitates, it spins, and it writes. And it costs less than 10 rupees to make. Uh, there was a very, very, uh, in Ayuka, the brightest physicist after Professor Narlikar was Professor T. Patnab. Amazing man. He, he died of a heart attack two years back. And Paddy had one daughter. Her name is Hamsa Padmanabhan. And you can Google Hamsa Padmanabhan. When she was in high school, she was just fascinated by this. And she wrote, when in high school, she wrote a paper explaining how this uh, levitating pencil works. And because of that, today, a minor star is named after Hamsa Padmanabhan. And this is the potential of every girl in this country. I've worked in many countries, and I come back, I see just potential in our children. Untapped potential, potential going down the drain. We have not been able to provide them with even very simple things in many parts of our country, which is such a shame. You don't need to be a very rich man to be able to make a, a simple motor or a small generator like this. I will, and this is a small generator. And you see this. Here is a syringe. It's a 10 ml syringe, and we have nothing to do with the needle. We just use the body of the syringe. And you can see these in my hand, these are two silver things. These are neodymium magnets. Neodymium is a, is a, it's a new element in the periodic table. It's a rare earth. China has the largest deposits of, uh, of uh, this uh, neodymium. They're slightly about 25 rupees each. So two of them, they go into the barrel of this and you can see that they can shake, right? And, and there is a thousand turns of insulated copper wire over here. The start and the end, you scrape and you just put an LED. You can see this LED over here. This is the LED. That's it. Now, it's a very strong magnet. I can't separate these two magnets. I just put it inside and if I shake the magnets, it's like a moving magnetic field. And very powerful magnetic field is moving. Lines of force in the cut, and this generates a EMF. And you can see what happens. You can see this LED is lighting up. This a generator. Costs, costs 50, 60 rupees. And all the Faraday's laws of induction, which you have learned, which you have mucked up in the abstract to crack some exam, they come clear to you. How is electricity generated? How is EMF generated? Very, very fundamental. See, the first fundamental principle of education, there are two, and they're so simple. You don't need to read big terms. First is from the concrete to the abstract. Little children, they do a lot of experiments. They have to use all their faculties, uh, seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, all their, all their faculties they have to use. Hmm? Then they understand, then the thing starts making sense to them. So what is from the concrete to the abstract? And then you go to uh, theorems, you go to equations, etc. Right? But give them a very rich experiential base. The second is from the near to the far. Don't talk of very, very far away things at the beginning. Start from what is immediate to the child. And you keep increasing the circle. It becomes a very circle which must embrace the whole universe. But start from the child's own small universe. So these two things, these are two very fundamental things for teachers. So what, and we, I also very deeply think that 
If we need to invest in little children, children in our center, I worked there for 11 years, and we held free workshops. But ninth and 10th class children never came to our center. The workshops were free, and there were exciting things they could do. Because, because many parents thought that in the ninth, in the 10th, they must join some coaching institute, some charter classes, some this classes, that classes, because then they'll be able to crack the need for the JE, and which is the stupidest thing. But children, so we thought we had only five years, children from the class fourth to class eight. This is a five year window which we had. And if we thought if we could give children a taste, 50 children from any school, would come to our center, spend three hours with us. And in the course, they would make one dozen science models with their own hands. They have to make it work and they take it back home. Trust me, in 11 years, children used to bring a small tiffin box, some idli, some upma, some. No child ever opened the tiffin box. Because what was happening in the center was much more exciting. You can always eat later, they thought. This is so much more exciting. But ninth and tenth, because of a very skewed system of these, uh, you know, uh, we have this national testing agency, multiple choice questions, no room for reflection for a child. Uh, they just teach you a few tricks to crack these exams. They don't make them cleverer. And someone said, that these coaching centers are very, very honest. They said, you come here not to learn, but to crack, and crack a test. You're not here to learn physics or chemistry, but how to crack an exam. They're very honest about that. So that's it. So I think that one thing which we need to do is to, uh, if Luca can do it, cases we can do it, and so many inspired teachers in Kerala, is to translate great books into Malayalam on science. Uh, there is a person uh, I've been very fascinated. His name is Franklin Brandley. Hmm. He, he was the, the director of the Hades Planetarium, an, an astro astronomer himself. And he's written some 150 most amazing picture books on science. Very amazing stuff. Gravity in your life. There is oxygen all around you. Um, how do you know about the directions? How do the seasons change? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Fascinating questions answered. Lovely illustrations. Very simple text, and a delight for a translator like me. So those are the kind of books we have. We have done about six hundred picture biographies, because children should have some icons. Whom do they inspire to become? So half a dozen. Half a dozen picture biographies of Einstein, of Marie Curie, of whatever great scientists, Nobel laureates, about people, great people in literature, etc., etc. There is a there is something called as a Mahasagar of books, the great portion of books, which is the archive.org. That was a vision of one man. Brewster Carling. In 1998, he had developed, he had discovered a new software called as Alexa. Alexa comes from the Library of Alexandria and he sold it to Google for $250 million in 1998. He had a vision, amazing vision. He says there was a Library of Alexandria which got burned down. But those were long, long thousands of years back. This is the digital era. Today, we can have the Library of Alexandria in every village school, in every school in the country, in every house. And he set up the archive.org. Today, over four crore books you can access. It's a matter of what I would suggest the KSSP that they digitize all their books and put them on the archives of posterity. It's been there for almost 30 years. I have a page on the archives where I every day scan books and put them. 18,500 books today I put on the archives. And these are 
great interest to teach us. Every day from my small website, 8,000 books are downloaded. It just shows the hunger for good books in our people. We must work hard uh, uh, to make these books available to them. I've been very fond. Uh, I owe my interest in science to the Russians because uh, in my small town, uh, which is Bareilly in UP, my parents had never been to school. And the only books we could buy were the Russian books on the roadside. Yakub Perelman, the father of Russian popular science, fun with physics, five rupees on the roadside. So I said, I owe so much uh, to Perelman. So in the last few years, after I retired from Ayuka, 1,200 Soviet books in various languages. I don't know the language. I have 50 books in, in Gujarati. I don't read Gujarati. But I see that they're not on the net, which is such a shame. So I've scanned Dostoevsky, I've scanned Maxim Gorky, I've scanned Pushkin in Gujarati and put them on the archives of posterity. I can buy these books online. There are these auctioneers, people who get hold of these Russian books and they, for a price, they're able to they sell. And I said, look, for 500 rupees, 600 rupees, I recently put the mother in Gujarati and I felt, I felt absolutely elated. For 500 rupees, I have made this book available to every Gujarati for all times. That's what I feel. So our task is a very humble task. Every day, create a fistful of soil. We can't be sitting. We, we should not be, uh, you know, not get into bureaucracy of any kind. Anything exciting, we must get into the local life. Make it it's accessible. It's not just thinking about great ideas, but making these great ideas accessible. We translated Toto Chan 35 years back. Today, in Marathi, 28th edition of Toto Chan. Uh, before, it, before the National Book Trust prints it, it has sold out. This is, the, this is uh, Toto Chan. So, some 80 books like this. Uh, we have been able to translate, make them available. This is our small bit to make the soil slightly more, put some more nutrients in this barren soil. So someday in our lives, maybe not in our lives, we can at least see a few, few blossoms. The, the spring harvest uh, will come much later. It's okay. Does anyone have any questions? Dear teacher, I think there are some questions in the box. For example, I just now saw so a. You can, you can ask me. Uh, you can uh, ask a, me. A, a student was asking whether yes. I can participate in this translation program. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You can most certainly do this translation. And if you write to me, my email is arvindtoys at gmail.com. Send me a line. I'll send you a few books with a PPT. Yeah? And and uh, uh, with a PowerPoint, you can translate the book in in Unicode uh, using Google tools because the PPT accepts only Unicode, and replace the Hindi with the Malayalam, and that's it. In in a day, you will have the book picture book in Malayalam. You can certainly do that. Arvind, amazing. your old friend, uh, Mr. Srinivasan Karta is somewhere here. Oh, is it? <laughs> I'd Karta, be delighted. You, um, why don't you show your face to Arvind? <laughs> I saw his name and I'd be delighted. I've learned so much from him. Uh, so several new toys he taught me. <laughs> Sir, one thing I want to read a question here. Yes. The main complaint and concern of the teachers is that children of the digital era are distracted by the technology. Yes. And they are not interested in the school education. Have you ever faced such a situation? No, I, I face it at home. I've got two grandchildren. But they are all the time doing activities much more interesting than seeing stupid videos. They don't even watch my videos because they're doing activities which are much more fun, right? Real life activities. So you see, children, parents have to invest their time into children, right? Uh, uh, my wife was a counselor for many years and she would always say 
that uh, if you see a problem child, you can trace it back to a problem parent, right? <laughs> this is what happens. Parents have to invest time. What are they earning money for? Money for the kids. And the kids don't need too much money from you. It needs more of your time. Please do activities with them. Don't uh, leave the children to mobile phones. Yes. Grab your children back and spend time with them. That's what absolutely, I'm absolutely. That's what I'm Sir, we have had heard that you have developed uh, teaching aids for uh, visually impaired school preschool children. Yes, yes, I have. Uh, can you tell your experience in that? No, I will. I will. See, for, for many years, I worked in a, I worked in a, uh, in Delhi, I was in Delhi for 14 years, and I worked with the Spastic Society for many, many years there. And what we used to do is every year, there are, there are about 20, 30 schools in Delhi, very enlightened, very, very enlightened. There is a school called the St. Mary's in Saptajim in Cliff where there are 20 percent children are special children. Some is visually impaired, some is hearing impaired, some come on crutches, some come on a wheelchair. The principal is very, very enlightened. And she welcomes them all. And she says that these special children teach the normal children a lot. We have five fingers. And all five fingers are different lengths. So in nature, there are some who are very bright, some who are not so bright, some who have uh, certain certain specialities, right? So they must help them. They will learn empathy. They will learn sisterhood. They will learn brotherhood with them. Very so in the Spice Society every year, I would say that we would call seventy teachers, sixty, seventy teachers for three days in this, and these are free workshop. And I would say that. Children who are special, they need much more activities than normal children, right? So in, in three days, they would make 150 toys and teaching aids and take it back with them. And I said, look, you work with the children directly. You understand this so much better. If someone, for instance, would like to make a cat, uh, they would make a cat, like for instance. And this is a cat. Half a newspaper. And you make a cricket cap, a very nice cricket cap. This is half a newspaper. You can see me wearing this cricket cap. This is half a newspaper. And if one child makes his cap, the whole class wants to make it. There's a peer pressure. And all the special children would like to wear a cap like this. So they would make 150 teaching aids and adapt it to the needs of the special children. Right? I can someone is saying that my research is in schooling. See, I have, I will send uh, uh, KK uh, one. I've got a link in Google Drive. Some very, very exciting books on education in, in a Google Drive link. You just have to click it and we're able to download them all. These are the books which have inspired me and I've shared them. So I will send KK and also to Luca, to Rizwan, this link. Hmm? And please ask him to share it with me. I will do that today. Okay, that we can. I'll yes. share it. Yes. And also my own 24 books are in another Google Drive link. I'll share both the links. So all the children, all the teachers, they will have access to all my books, all digital books. Very happy to. Okay. Okay. Uh, shall we slowly wind up? Arvind, thank you so much. Thanks.